Yes. All right, you're taking up too much of my time. Now sit down. <laughs> Isn't that cool to meet new people? Come on, that's what we're doing in 2021. We are going to connect with a whole bunch of new divine. I believe that you have some divine friendships in this room, uh, in this church that you have yet to meet. So uh, and those of you online, introduce yourself online as well in comments. Hey, yo, what's up? You know, and uh, connect with someone. You guys ready to receive tithes and offerings? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 35. It's the first day of giving. It's the first day of our first fruits of giving in 2021. I want to read this verse to you. It's very simple. It says, so don't throw away your bold faith. It will bring you rich rewards. Don't throw away your bold faith. You know, in times of uncertainty, it's the time to be bold. You can't shrink back when we're facing any form of challenge, not just health challenge or relational challenges, but even economic challenges. You never throw away. You never put off your bold faith. You have to have bold faith in 2021, knowing that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and he doesn't change his mind. How many know that God wants to bless his people? God wants to reward his people. But do you realize that if you read in Hebrews chapter 6, um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is God and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So think about it. When you decide to bring your tithe, I'm not talking about your gift, okay? I'm not talking about drop a little something in the bucket. I'm saying when you start trusting God, with your tithe. What's my tithe? It's my 10% of what God says, bring to my house. And that trains your heart to trust him. When you learn to trust God financially, you learn to trust God in everything. I've learned that through 24 years. When I have learned to trust God financially, I trust him in anything. You know why? Because money is always the testing place for every single human being on planet earth. It's the testing place for everybody. Everybody wants to hear great messages, great inspiration, great motivation. But the moment you say money, it's like, okay, what? Okay, yeah. And it just doesn't work. So the scripture says, don't throw away your bold faith. It will bring you rich rewards. Amen. And we don't give to get rich. I don't, I don't believe that. I'm not even that kind of preacher. Give and God's going to give you. You know, I, I just don't think like that. I think we should have the heart to give because we know he's the source and that's it. End of story. That's it. End of story. And I believe that he blesses. I really do. I believe that he's, the, he's my rewarder. He's my provision. And so let's text to give. You can do an envelope, old school, whatever it is that you like to do. And uh, online, same thing. They'll put up the text number. And let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for being the God of provision. Not just the God of vision, but the God who provides for the vision. I'm praying that in Jesus' name, those that are believing you for new jobs, those who are believing you for increase, those that are believing you to launch their entrepreneurial spirit, Father God, in whatever business that, that you've placed in their heart, Father, whatever they want to accomplish, I thank you, Jesus, that we know that you're the source of everything in our life. So today we bring our tithe happily and with joy, and we'll hold nothing back, Father God. 2021, we're going to hold nothing back. Our life belongs to you. And if our life belongs to you, that means that everything else belongs to you as well. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right. Cool. Everybody say with me, I'm ready.
I want you to know this real quickly, that 2021 is not a year for you to coast. You cannot coast in 2021. It's not a year for you to make any more excuses. We cannot make excuses, especially those watching online. Let's not make excuses where we get so comfortable, where we like watching or being a part of church in our homes, on a couch, with that nice soft pillow. It's so cool. I love the pillow, but stop letting the pillow overcome you. Um, there's a reason for online, and that reason is for people that don't have the means or the health to make it to church, and we want those people to use wisdom. So I, I've been saying that all 2020. I have not shamed anyone who has watched online. But at some point, you have to stop coasting. You have to stop living in fear at some time. We said, you know what, we respect COVID, but we're not going to fear COVID. When you let fear dictate the decisions of your life, let me tell you something, without you even knowing, it's becoming a normal habit. It's becoming a part of your identity. And before you know it, you'll be afraid to risk anything for God. And how many know that faith is translated risk? I'm not saying stupid risk. I'm saying calculated risk. And my God's a calculated God. So it's not the year to coast. It's not the year to make excuses. It's not the year to shrink back. It's not the year to resist. It's not the year to push back. God is making his church ready for battle. Last year was rehearsal. This year, it's on. And you have to come with the spirit of I'm ready. And so let me start with this first verse, Psalm chapter 78. Verse 41, and I like reading it in this version, whatever version of the Bible you like reading, which I encourage you, please, you know, get yourself a book Bible, guys. I love technology. Trust me, I do. I love techie. I always want all the new stuff. But, but there's nothing like having your paperback Bible that you can turn the page because, Lord forbid, one day it's the end of the world and there's no more power. What are you going to do now? <laughs> right? You need to make sure you got this bad boy ready to go, right? And, uh, and you know what? It doesn't swipe up, but it does swipe left and right. <laughs> just, just saying. Just saying. Okay, look at this. He says, again and again, they limited God. Again and again, they limited God. Again and again, they limited God. Again and again and again and again. The same issue, the same cycle, the same problems. It's just again and again. It's just a new year. But you're doing the same thing again. And when you do the same thing again and again, guess what you're doing? You're what? You're limiting God. You're limiting God. Look at the person next to you and say, let's not limit God this year. Let's not limit him. So he says again and again, they limited God. Look at this. When you limit God, here's what happens. Okay, he says, preventing him. When you limit God, you're preventing him from blessing you. Continually. <clears throat> I love this. Continually they turn back from him and provoke the Holy One of Israel. Continually they turn back from him. This is, this, is a, this is a behavior. This is a mindset. When you limit God, continually you will prevent God from blessing you, but you're also going to provoke the Holy One of Israel. You will provoke God. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to provoke God. I want to obey God in 2021. I, I want to be in, in, his, in his divine plan. I want to be in his divine blueprint. I don't want to limit God anymore. And God did not create us with limitation. He created us with opportunity. We have an opportunity this year to make some changes. But you got to be ready. I have to be ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So... 2020, once again, that was just a warm-up. Are you all warmed up? I hope you are, because that was just your warm-up. Uh, but now we're in 2021, and regardless of whatever darkness we face, whatever challenges, whatever pushback, I don't know how much you read the social media. I don't know how much you read the news, but more and more I am seeing a heavy attack against Christianity. It's strong right now. In certain states this week now, they are finding churches $10,000 per service. Per service. $10,000. To not have outdoor or indoor services. It's just crazy. More and more you, you're hearing government trying to, 
to dictate, trying to create the type of worship that we are to have. Whether or not you can sing, whether or not you can worship, whether or not you can come together, who can be in your home on Thanksgiving, who can be in your home on Christmas. And not, this is not a political sermon, okay? Don't, don't get me. I'm just telling you, you have to be prepared for battle because the assignment, the, the plot and the plan of the enemy, he's continually not stopping and he's not going to stop and he's not going to relent. He's going to continue to do what he, the enemy does. He comes to steal, kill, destroy. That's what the devil does. So you have to know who your enemy is as you step into 2021. If not, you're going to revert back to some maybe old mindsets, behaviors, and we're going to hit on that a little bit. But I want us to understand, I have to be ready for this year. I'm ready for anything. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to stand. I'm ready to, I'm ready to progress. I'm ready to push, whatever it takes. And so the scripture says, this, say it with me, say, they continually, continually turn back from him. Say that with me. They continually turn back from him. What makes you or what keeps you continually turning back from him? A lot of times we think that we stop doing something because we're stopping doing something for someone. No, when you stop doing something, you didn't stop doing something for me or for the person sitting next to you. or for, No, you stop doing something continually for God because the Bible says whatever your, your hand finds to do, he says do it with all your heart and do it heartily as unto the Lord. And so what is it that continually makes you to turn back? I want to put in us as a church this spirit of I'm not going to turn back. I'm not going to live back. I'm not going to look back. I'm going to press forward. I'm going to live forward. As a matter of fact, the word for this church in 2021 is living forward. We have to move forward, guys. We cannot get comfortable and just keep making the same decisions. And so I'm excited about what we're about to do as a church, especially when we all come together on January what? 16th. Good job. Amen. So listen, so God is never limited by what, you're, what you lost. God is never limited by your education. God is not limited by your hangups. God is not limited by your economy. God is not limited by your pain and suffering. God is not limited by your failures. God is not limited by you. Why? Because the people here, the children of Israel, the only way, reason that they limited him was because they kept, to, they kept continually turning back from God. This is the only way you can limit God is by you continually turning back away from the things he's asked you to do. And so let's just recap last week just to kind of get an understanding of why do we turn back. And I'm going to use some markers today. I want you to look at on, on the screen, and I want you to write this down. Habits shape your identity. Put that down. Habits shape your identity like your identity shapes your habits, okay? Let's start with this, okay? So as we're preparing for 2020, why do we turn back from him? Why do we lose grit? Why do we relapse and go back to old toxic behaviors? Let's go back to this beautiful little onion, okay? Let's see how many great students I have in the room. How do you remember the, the outward onion? No. Outcomes. Very good. But hey, you, you tried. That's awesome. I love it. I love chars. Who remembers the second layer? Process. Okay, you better remember this last one. Identity. Man, you all get a star today. Okay, so outcomes, process, and identity. Okay, let's just kind of talk about that a little bit. Okay, because the problem is, is that habits shape your identity like your identity shapes your habits. Just kind of just, just think about that for a second. My habits shape my identity, my habits. What are my habits? My habits are my behavior. You know, this week we were in staff meeting and we were just talking about habits and goals. And one of the habits that you know, that we were talking about is the habit of pushing snooze on your alarm. And I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, there are people here that like to press snooze at least five times. Any snoozers in the house today? Okay, good. You're being honest. Awesome. But you know what? We were listening to a teaching on how to break the habit of snoozing. 
And they said the way to break the habit of snoozing, and, it, and it's linked up to your, 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 your neurological mindset, is they say when your alarm goes off, you immediately say this. You count one, two, three, four, five, and boom, you get off your bed. Just like that. That's, and I know in the natural, it's like, that sounds so stupid. But when you, when you begin to create a new habit and you start saying things like one, two, three, four, five, it, what's going to happen after five? I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to get up. It's your countdown. And so um, this, 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 this science behind this mindset or this idea was, was tested by a few people and one person said, that is the most stupidest thing that you can do. But you know what? I'm going to try it anyways. This person was someone who was anointed at snoozing. Okay? They were great at it. They had degrees in it. They can teach you how to, you know, keep snoozing the alarm over and over again. But she finally said that she tried it the first time. She said, one, two, three, four, five. And long behold, she got up. And then before you knew it, she just kept saying, one, two, three, four, five, and she got up. One, two, three, four, five, where now it just became a habit. Every time that alarm goes off, she always, even though she knows she's going to get up, she still counts the number, and she gets right up. I tested that this morning because I, I wake up at, you know, either 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., depending on how far I am with my message. And this, the moment my alarm went off, I said, one, two, three, four, five, boom, and I wanted to go. Why? Because I wanted 10 more minutes. Just 10 more minute pillow love. You know what I'm saying? And so outcomes process, and identity. So let's just talk about this. Here's the issue. So when you look at the outcome, when you look at the process, and when you look at the uh, uh, identity, a lot of us, we keep living this way. This is why we won't change. This is why we won't be ready. Because we tend to live on the outcome. We live outward and not inward. Where God, if you look at all throughout Scripture, if you look at the Gospels, if you read all the stories of Jesus, Jesus always says, I want you to lead from your heart. I want you to lead from inside. I don't want you to lead from outside. But you know what we do? We all probably, hopefully, wrote goals, okay, which is good. But if you're not careful, you're just looking for the outcome of those goals, and you're not looking for the process of those goals, or you're not focusing on the identity. So what we do is you could either live in the realm and the world of just outcomes, 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 only to come to, you know, December of 2021, and you look back and you see that, man, I really didn't do anything. Because your whole focus was just on the outcome. Your whole focus is just on the outward. That's why God says this. He said, while man focuses on the outward appearance, God says, I focus on the heart. So sometimes people will only live with a lifestyle of outcome. Other people will only live, like I said, me, I'm a process guy, okay? Uh, that's my issue. I will live in a process and outcomes, process and outcomes at the expense of not knowing who you are. Or losing who you are. And you know what losing who you are means? You forget why you do what you're being called to do. You forget why you do what you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing. And so this becomes a challenge. So we live from outward uh, in, and we think we do, but the reality is that God wants us to live from inward out. And if you can just start getting that revelation, that understanding, and then we're going to break it down now today. So once again, habits shape your identity like your identity shapes your habits. Now, if you're a note taker, write this down. Outcomes. Let's just talk about outcomes real quick. This is just a quick recap, and I'm going to move on. Outcome-based habits, the focus is on what you want to achieve. Outcomes. Outcome-based habits is the focus, uh, 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 the focus is on what you want to achieve. Identity-based habits, the focus is on who you want to become. So in this year, I'm asking you, as you're saying, I'm ready, you're focusing on who I want to become, not what I want to do. What I become will determine what I do. Not what I do will determine what I become. Are you hearing me? So stay out of the outcome realm and come back to who you are in Christ Jesus. Start with who you are in Christ alone. Start building that strong foundation, that strong relationship, not only with Jesus, but also with the Father. Not only with the Father, but also with the Holy Spirit. You have, I'm starting, my next series is called The Sacred Three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm going to be teaching that after this series. Okay, The Sacred Three is what we need to focus on. And so we need to come back 
to this place. Now, the reason it's hard to change our habits that eventually develop our behavior is because we learn to identify with them. Let me explain this, okay? So learned behavior becomes identity behavior. For example, for example, I'm fat. Some people that use those comments like, man, I'm fat, you learn to make that your identity. And all you see is, I'm a fat person. I'm fat. It becomes who you are. It becomes what you're becoming. And then out of that, what do you start doing when you think you're fat? You just keep eating whatever you see in front of you. There's no change. It becomes learned behavior. It becomes your identity. Another one is I'm sick. There are people that are always just talking about their sickness. I'm not, listen, I'm not denying anyone's sickness, but sometimes it's just I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. My sickness, my disease, my this, my that, my, 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 my. Well, of course, you identify with that. Other people say, I'm not smart, I'm not good at that. I hate it when people say, I'm not good at that, I don't know how to do that. Like, have you ever done that before? No, but I know I'm not good at it. See, that's your identity. You're not good at doing anything. That's not good. How about this one? I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a feeling person. I'm not an emotional person. What? No, we're all emotional. We all have something in us. I'm ugly. I'm just that way. Take it or leave it. No. <laughs> That, that's not who you are. I'm hurt. I'm broken. And so David, when you think about David, David developed great warriors that had good skills, okay? But even David, when he looked at his warriors, and we're going to talk about this, one thing that David said, he said, I don't care about how much skill you have. I only want to know one thing. You know what David asked his men? I just want to know one thing. Is your heart with me? Listen, in 2021, you better surround yourself with people whose heart are with you. Not skill, heart. I can teach anyone skill, but I can't teach everyone heart. You either got one or you don't. Yeah, well, of course, Pastor, we all have hearts. Yeah, but some are black and some are clean. So it's about the heart. It's about the identity. It's about who am I becoming. Or even better, it's about who am I going to become in 2021? If you think you're all these things, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart, I'm not intelligent, man, I, I am who I am, take what you get. No, get rid of that mindset. You have to change that behavior, but it's about the in, inward, outward. So uh, David starts developing these great warriors, and and and. He sees their skill, which is great. We should all have some skill. But the most important thing to David was their heart, their identity. And so identity keeps you where vision wants to take you. Okay, remember that. Identity keeps you where vision wants to take you. That's the only thing that will keep you. Now, here we go. Ready? Now, let's give you the example. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 9 through 10. Are you ready? Okay. Let's talk about a game. We're going to about talk about two guys, two of his men. Okay, we can talk about all of them, but these two really stuck out to me. 2 Samuel 23, verse 9 through 10, it says, and after him was Eliezer. So mind you, after him. So after him means there was someone before him as well. And it breaks down. If you want to go read 2 Samuel for yourself, go back and read it. You'll learn a lot from these men. It says, the son of Dodo. That sucks, huh? Dang. Who's your dad? Dodo. Even if you come from the family line of Dodo, praise Jesus, God could do something with you. Amen. The son of Dodo, the son of uh, Ehoite, one of their, look at this, one of, their, one, of, one, of, one of three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle, they were gathered there for what? Okay, so everybody knew, okay, everybody had the outcome, everybody had the process, but in this story, but not everybody had the identity. Stay with me, okay? So it says that they gathered there for battle. All of the children of Israel were there. They were there with an outcome. They were there with a process. They knew this is what we're supposed to do. But look at this. And the men of Israel did what? Retreated. He rose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand stuck to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day and the people returned after 
him only to plunder. In other words, that's like, can I get a few, uh, um, one, two, three, can I get you guys to come up here? Four, sir, can I get you over here? Five, can I get you over here, please, real quick? And let's social distance, but let's come up on stage. What the heck, let's come Because we need social distance, and we don't want people on media to send me letters, so hurry up. Just social distance, just kind of spread out behind me. Spread out behind me. If you came together, you can be together, that's fine. Okay, so come over here where they can see you on camera. How about that, Ray? So, so, so check this out. So we all know our outcome. Man, we're, we're talking it up, man. Here's what we're going to do this year. You're talking to your family. You're talking to your spouse. You're talking to your kids, man. You're talking to each other. You're planning. You're like, yes, we're going to kill it. We're going to crush 2021, right? So the outcome is our goals. The outcome is all the things that we want to accomplish, right? The process, how are we going to do that, that goal? How are we going to accomplish that outcome? So we start writing how it's going to look like, but all of a sudden... Okay, we're all in it to win it, right? We're all ready to go. Sometimes they may even look like your family. <laughs> okay, and so we're all ready, but all of a sudden, obstacle comes. Change comes. So let's almost start moving forward together. We start moving forward together. Now you see the enemy come, and then all of you start running back. Just kind of start pushing back, pushing back. So I want you to see this, okay? So this guy, Elizar, was ready for the outcome, had the process, but everyone that was with him and around him didn't have the identity to stick through the plan. And so often, sometimes even you with your friends, the reason that you don't change is because you like to hang out with the crowd. When God's not looking for crowds, God's looking for followers that are willing at any cost no matter what, for you to crush 2021 and do it even if you're the last one left. If you read the story, he says he arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weird and his hand stuck to the sword. Let me tell you something. You can't let go of whatever it is you want to accomplish in 2021. You got to hold on to that thing, man, like, man, nothing can take this out of my grip. Nothing. No one will take this out of my hand. No one is going to tell me that I'm not going to accomplish whatever it is that God wants to do inside of me. No one is, if all of you stop worshiping God in this church, I will still worship God in this house. Amen? That's what God is saying to us. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. So, so just picture yourself like this. I mean, this guy, man, this guy was a beast. Eleazar was like, man, I'm not going to shrink back. I'm not going to run back. I have to make a decision. I got to hold on. And you know what our sword is? Our sword is what? This word. I'm going to hold this word with the grip. And I'm not going to let it go. No matter what everybody says in this world, you can't do this, you can't do that. But what did God say? What did he say you're called to do? He said, Fight the good fight of faith. He says, stand fast. Hold fast to the confession of your faith. No matter what you face, you're not running back. And you, but, but that has to be inside of you. That's identity. See, the other people were living off of outcomes and process, but this man, Eleazar, was the only one that was living out of identity. When you have no identity, you will always revert back to your habit, your addiction, your toxicity, your old mindset, your old ways. You go back to that nasty old relationship or you always find something that looks similar to the last one you had. It's called familiar spirit. Until you start making a stand. But you, everybody, listen, say this to me. Say, get a grip. Come on, you got to get a grip in 2021. Are you hearing me? Okay, can we keep going? Yeah. All right, let's go. We only have a few more minutes. So, so most of the Israelites had the outcome mind of what they wanted. They had the process of how they would battle. So they all heard the same thing of what they wanted. But when the opposition came, when the challenge came, when the pushback came... It really showed who were the ones that were with God, and it showed the ones that were too afraid to keep following God. And that's, this, that's the season we're living in now. Not everyone's going. Not everyone's going to be ready. Not everyone's going to stand. And that's just the reality. But you have to make a personal decision that no matter what, I'm not going to be that person that says, oh, I'm going to be neutral. No, you either stand for righteousness or don't stand for nothing. I'm neutral. I don't, I don't know. I don't get along. I, I'm not involved in drama. No one asks you to get involved in drama. 
Have a conviction. Have a backbone. Stand up for righteousness. I'm not saying stand up for opinion. I'm saying stand up for righteousness. Stand up for what God said. What did he say about you? What did he say about your healing? What did he say about your outcome? What did he say about your process? What did he say about your healing? Why don't you, why don't you defend that instead? Let's defend that. Let's fight for that. Amen? Righteousness. And so I love this because it says that uh, Eleazar, he has a tough name. He arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your identity, with all your heart. And when you do it, do it unto Jesus. Amen? I'm serving Jesus. I give my life to Jesus. I surrender my life to Jesus. And he says, and then the Lord brought about a great victory. You know what's sad is once, once uh, um, uh, Eleazar got, won the battle, you know what? Everybody came back, oh, my God. Everybody wanted to enjoy the spoils. Man, forget you. You ain't going to enjoy these spoils. What's wrong with you? Huh? It's like, oh, okay, yay, we're back. That, to me, that's like, man, dude, you lack some character. Like, you only show up when it's all good. But why, don't, why weren't you with me when it was all hell? Where were you when the fire was on? Where were you when all hell was breaking loose? All of a sudden, everything's calm now. Now you come back? Oh, I don't even want to go there. We'll leave that alone right there because I, look, listen, here's some points. Every day, you need to arise and attack your complacency. Write these down. You need to arise and attack any procrastination in your life. You need to arise and attack your snooze button. Okay, that's a big one, I'm telling you. You need to arise and attack your pillow. You got to get rid of that pillow if you have to. Man, as, as my friend, as soon as you wake up, just throw the pillow off your head, man. Be like, no pillow. No pillow for you. You need to rise and attack your perspective of life, but also your perspective of others. You got to rise and attack that stuff. Because your mind will tell you this. Elar's hand was so stuck to the sword. So his hand was gripping what he was going to accomplish that nothing was going to change his mind. That's an I'm ready spirit. Let's use another one. 2 Samuel 23, verse 11 through 12, quickly. And after him, after who? After Eliezer was Shammah. Everybody say Shammah. The son of Aji, the Heretite or Hererite. The Philistines had gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. So the people fled from the Philistines. But he, everybody say but he. But look at this. But Shammah, he stationed himself in the middle of the field defended it and killed the Philistines so the Lord brought a, about a great victim victory. Listen, you have to station yourself this year. This year you have to say no matter what the heck comes my way, I am not going to move. I'm going to stand in the middle of the field, in the middle of the fire, and in the middle of the fire, let me tell you something, you know who's with you in the middle of the fire? Jesus. And you know what? Even if there's fire, you won't get burnt God even takes it to a whole other level. He says, not only will you not get burnt, he said, you won't even have the smell or the stench of fire. You'll come out smelling like a sweet-smelling rose. In the middle, he said, he didn't just stand there. He said, man, I, got, I went right down to the middle and said, I ain't moving. Oh, no, this is, this is my lentils. This is my farm. This is my land. This is my property. This is my calling. This is my purpose, and nothing's going to move me from that. That's, that's a I'm ready spirit. While everybody else did what? Everybody else did what? They fled. Everybody else fled. But the question is, will you stand in the middle? Will you stand in the gap for your family? Will you stand in the gap for your children? Will you stand in the gap for your friends? Will you stand in the gap for your church? Will you stand in the gap for God? Will you stand in the middle? Will you be willing to stand up and defend it and kill the enemy? Amen? But I'm going to show you how we do that because it's not just reading this great scripture and be like, wow, that's so inspiring. No, 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 no. There's work to be done. You guys want to know the work part now? Okay, so let's just start with Shama. So Shama, it takes godly character to stand up to Satan and your enemies. That's number one that Shama was teaching them. It takes godly character, not just character. Because anybody can have character, but not everybody has godly character. So it takes godly character to face the enemy. The second thing, it takes knowing your true identity in Christ, not to identify with your past or your present circumstance. Listen, if you've been divorced, it's not I'm a divorcee, no. I was divorced. 
okay? It's not, I'm a failure. It's, I failed, okay? It's not, I'm a mistake. No, you made a mistake. Stop living based on your past. Stop letting people give you a label of what they think you are and start knowing who you are. So when they start labeling, you're like, no, that ain't me. I may have made a mistake. Yes, I may, I may have had some failures, but it's not who I am. Amen? You got to come to that place. But fasting and prayer, everybody say fasting and pray. Shorababa. This is where it's going to get deep. Okay, I'm already done. I'm going to give you the fasting points here. Okay, we're going to be fasting and praying, and it starts this coming Wednesday, whatever that date is. This Wednesday, we're launching a 21-day fast. We're doing it earlier this year. You know why? Because normally we do it towards the middle of the month. This year we said, no, we're going to get everybody quick. So, man, go get all your fast food you want today through Tuesday. Could come Wednesday, you dine to self. Amen. Come on. You, you either going to stand in the middle with us or you're going to be one of those people that are going to be like running back. No, 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 no. Corporately, we're going to come in together and we're going to fast and we're going to pray and we're going to see the chains broken off of our lives, the curses that have been trying to linger around our life, our generational curses from whether it was your mother, your father, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, all those curses must be broken, but they don't just happen because you're a good Christian who goes to his church, sings three songs, sits and listens to a message that doesn't break like that. It breaks when you choose to fast and to pray corporately as a church where we all stand together, we fight together, we defend together, we pray together. Come on, that's what we're doing. I'm telling you right now. And so it takes courage. Okay, remember the verse said again and again they limited God. You're either going to limit God as we fast and pray or you're going to look at this as an opportunity for you, as a possibility for you. They limited God again and again, preventing him from blessing them. Continually they turned back from him. Fasting will keep you from turning back. Fasting will keep you focused. Listen, we don't fast to look spiritual. We fast to draw closer to Jesus. We don't fast to lose weight. That's the benefit. We fast to die to self. Let me give you some quick points. The power and importance of fasting here are some very important facts. Number one, okay, fasting was an expected discipline in both Old Testament and New Testament, you need to know this biblically. This is why we're doing this. So, for example, most had fasted twice or 40-day periods. Jesus fasted 40 days and reminded his disciples, when you fast, not if you fast. Come on, this is the moment. 2021 is when you have to fast. It's not, hey, I hope if you fast. No. And normally I would say, hey, just take three days or four days with us. Take a week with us. No, take all 21 days with us. All 21 days. And we're going to have links on, on, on our um, church app, our website. We're going to have devotionals, video devotionals. We're going to have everything you need on how to fast and pray, okay? So we have to fast. The second thing is fasting and prayer can restore the loss of the first love in your life. Who's the first love? Jesus. You want to restore that first love? You want to restore that, that, that I ain't quitting attitude, that I'm ready attitude? You fast and pray. Okay, so fasting comes from genuine desire for deeper intimacy with Jesus and the knowledge of God's perfect will for your life. You want to know God's will? Fast. Number three, fasting is a biblical way uh, to truly humble yourself in the sight of God. Okay, in Psalm 35, 13, David said this, I humble myself through fasting. Number four, fasting enables the Holy Spirit to reveal your true spiritual condition. Let me tell you something. When you start pushing food back, ooh, you'll see who's in charge. You'll find out you, you were never in charge. Your flesh was in charge. Come on, you're going to be going to the fridge like 10, 20, 30 times a day. Resulting in brokenness, repentance, and a transformed life. Number five, fasting allows the Holy Spirit to quicken the word of God in your heart and his truth will become more meaningful to you. Number six, fasting can transform your prayer life into a richer and more personal experience. You know, sometimes we just pray and we're like, I didn't feel nothing. Oh, when you fast and pray, you're going to find yourself crying and weeping before the Lord. You know why? Because now it's, it's less of me and more of him. Why? Man, I'm hungry. I'm tired. 
I'm, I'm done. I just can't no more. But fasting just brings you to that place. You just start weeping because you're hungry, and then you'll start weeping because you love him. But you'll weep eventually. Amen? Number seven. Fasting can result in a dynamic personal revival in your own life. Come on, you want some revival? Come on, do you want to come in here and just kind of be very stoic? Or do you want to, not just here, at home, at work, or do you want to have some personal revival? Man, when people see you're like, you're different, man. You're something, you smell different. And it's not your perfume or your cologne. No, man, you, you, your fragrance, man, there's, there's something, I, there's peace when you walk in the room. That's what God wants us to do. He'll make you a channel of revival to other people's lives. Fasting will increase your anointing. It will. Okay, number eight. Fasting and prayer are the only disciplines that, will, that fulfill the requirements of 2 Chronicles 7.14. Okay, this is the only. Everybody always reads this verse, but we forget what we have to do. It says in 2 Chronicles 7.14, if my people, notice it says if, because not everybody will. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn. Listen, instead of turning from God, how about turn from your wicked ways? Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is the fasting we're doing. When he says, I have humbled myself, means I have fasted. So I want you to sign up. Same thing, sign up. On the, why? Why do I want to sign up? Because, man, it makes a commitment. When you put your name on something, you're making a vow, I'm going to do it. So it's a 21-day fast. Now, for whatever reason, if you can't do 20 day, days because of health issues, whatever, listen, don't let your health be an excuse. As a matter of fact, people don't die from not eating. People die because they eat too much. I'm going to die. No, trust me, you won't die. No, your pride will die. You'll live. And that's why we fast and pray. And so if we really want to see this complete transformation of knowing who we are in Christ Jesus, you got to fast. That's where you discover who I really am in Jesus. Less of me, more of him. Amen. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, I thank you as we prepare to fast, as we go to the church app, the website, as we sign up, Father. As we write our name, Lord, I pray that it's a meaningful moment that we're declaring to you, Father, that we're ready. We're ready for transformation. Lord, we're ready to work from the inside out. I thank you whatever challenges we've been facing, things that have been hindering us from becoming what you have called us to be, Father. Limitations that we've placed on us, Lord, that you never even put on us. I thank you that as we fast and as we pray, you're going to break the chains of deception, the chains that control us, the chains that keep us from, from not only being who you want us to be, but from, for healing, Lord, that we would heal, that we would stop looking to man for healing, that we would stop looking to other sources for healing, but that Jesus is the, is the only healer, Christ alone the cornerstone of our life. And so I pray that this, this corporate fasting that we begin on Wednesday, Lord, I pray for supernatural miracles in this house. I pray for miracles for families. I pray for miracle uh, in health, those that may be dealing with cancer or diabetes. Lord, we're praying for a turnaround. Lord, we've been praying that even this fasting will change our eating habits, our health habits, our mental habits, Father, I thank you that our behavior is going to be birthed in 2021 from our identity in Jesus, and we will see the promise of God. Holy Spirit, help us to fast, because it's not easy to fast. It's not easy to pray, but I thank you that we're going to just take every day, one step at a time, to seek you. We're not trying to be perfect in this fast. We just want to draw closer to you. We're not doing this as a duty. We're doing this as a privilege. And so give that heart to us, Father. In that same attitude, if you're sitting here or watching online and you don't have a relationship with God, I want to invite you to receive Christ today. If you've never done that before at the count of three, I'm asking you to either lift your hand. Maybe you've walked away from God. Listen, the only way to heaven is through the Son, Jesus. Outside of Jesus, you can't make it to heaven. Listen, you're all going to expire at some point. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. 
We need to secure our salvation. We need to be confident in the salvation. Maybe you grew up in religion. Religion is not a relationship. God wants relationship with you. God wants, to, wants you and him to know each other intimately. So when I count to three, I want you to lift your hand or, or, or online. You, you type the word life, and we're all going to pray this together. Let's start 2021 saying, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I'm no longer going to live religiously, but I want to know you personally. At the count of three, one, two, three. If that's you, lift your hand in this room or online. I see that hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Online, type the word life. Outdoor in the patio. If you're lifting your hand, you just lift it up high. Leave it up. And you just say, yes, Lord, that's mine. And I want you all to pray this with me, every single one of us. Ready? Pray this. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins, every one of them. Today, it's a brand new day. I receive a new life in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, rescuing me, delivering me, and setting me free as I follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. God bless you. Thank you for that boldness of lifting your hand. That same hello card, all you do is you fill that out. You take it to the red tent and just let us connect with you. Just mark that little box, I receive Christ online. If you did that as well, you just go ahead and type the word life and text the word life to the number there. And one of our prayer team members will call you, connect with you. Man, it's the best decision. Don't, but don't just stop here like, wow, wasn't that a great service? No, you got to keep coming, keep growing, and let's. Let's see what God's going to do in 2021. It's going to be great. Let me give you these few announcements, get you guys out of here. Don't forget, if you're going to fast and pray, if, because I know not everybody will, but those that will, go to our church app or our online and sign your name and put the days you're going to fast. You can do 21 days. If you want to do 10 days, if you want to do 12 days, 7 days, whatever it is, just fast. Let's do it corporately. Get involved. And then also, don't forget the volunteer uh, card. You can fill it out online as well on our website or our church app on January what? You're so intelligent. I love you guys. And then don't forget the, uh, the Living Forward card that we've handed out to you guys. It shows you when the next men's ministry meeting is, the next women's ministry, and some other things that are on there. And let's get ready for 2021. Stand to your feet. Let's get you guys out of here. We love you guys. We appreciate you. Let's have the best year ever, amen, with intention, with purpose. So, Father, we thank you. Lift a hand to heaven. Father, we thank you that we're leaving here today, Father, focusing in this fast on our identity. I thank you that as we know who we are in Christ Jesus, Father, we'll no longer let the shame, the guilt, the condemnation, or the limitation hinder what you want to do in our life. And so, Father, we declare in Jesus' name that we're, we're getting prepared for battle, Father. I thank you that nothing will make us run back. Nothing will make us hold back. Nothing, Father God, will stop us in 2021. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Bye-bye. <laughs>